Here is another integral battle. The first one, the integral of 1 over 1 minus sine square x. The second one, the integral of 1 over 1 plus sine square x. This one was a minus, this one is a plus. So, what do you guys think? As usual, pause the video and try them out. Okay, in my opinion, both of these are hard. Unless we see the secret to do this. Okay, and that's the beauty, that's the fun of the integration part, right? And I think this right here is actually easier to see what the secret is. So, this is the integral of 1 over 1 minus sine square x. And maybe some of you guys tried it to factor this out, right? Because this is the same as 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x. I know that's correct, but then, unfortunately, that does not really help, right? Well, well, well. This is the integral on the top is 1 over 1 minus sine square x. It's what? This is the same as cosine square x, right? Because you see, cosine square x is 1 minus sine square x. Sine square x plus cosine square x is equal to 1, so this is the same as that. And now, what good does this do? Well, what's 1 over cosine? 1 over cosine secant. Here we have 1 over cosine square. So this is the same as integrating secant square x, dx. And there was one time I did a video on this, the integral of secant square x, and I got a lot of dislike. I don't know why. How can we integrate this? We have to know our derivative table really well, right? The answer to this is just tangent x. And then we are done. So let me put a plus c. And you see, I put a parenthesis around the x because I need to add the c right here. So I want to indicate that the plus c is outside of the tangent. That's why I put a parenthesis around the x. So that's it for that one. And now, for this one, it's much trickier. 1 over 1 plus sine square x. And this part here, unfortunately, is not an expression that has a nice identity or you can do anything too much with that. Some of you guys um, may multiply the top and bottom by cosine x. And it didn't work out nicely, right? And you may try the u substitution, but um, still it didn't work out nicely. And you may try to add something on the denominator or subtract something, um, yeah, but then still didn't work out nicely. You may also use another kind of substitution, but then that would be pretty hard as well. So this is um, the idea behind this. The reason that this is hard is that first, this is not as easy as that, right? It's not a, a nice identity right away. And the main reason is that we do not have enough things to work with. Keep in mind, sometimes when we are working with integrals, the more is better, right? When we have more, it's actually, it's actually easier to work with. If you pay attention to sine square x, the thing about the derivative, you get cosine whatsoever, right? 2 sine x times cosine x and anything like that, but then just nothing on the top that we can, you know, somehow play around with it. Well, why don't we produce more things? Now you can try to multiply, but then the secret to this question is that we are going to divide by something on top and on the bottom. What's the best friend of sine? It's cosine, right? So, I'm not going to multiply top and bottom by cosine x, but instead, I'm going to divide everything by cosine square x. So on the top, and let me just write it down right here. On the top, I'm going to have 1 over, I'm going to divide the 1 on the top by cosine square x, and then you see this 1, I will also do the same, 1 divided by cosine square x, and then plus sine square x, and then divided by cosine square x, and then still have the dx. As you can see, I pretty much just divide the top and bottom by cosine square x. And that's why I put on red. And now let's talk about what good does this do. It's kind of similar to that, huh? This is the integral. On the top, I still have that secant square x. I can rewrite that. On the bottom, this is secant square x, right? And then we can say this is plus. And what's this? Sine x over cosine x is tangent, but this is the second power, so we have tangent square x, dx. And now what? Well, as we see, this right here is tangent x, and then to the second power, right? Tangent x to the second power. And on the top, we have a secant square x. Here we can use a uh, u substitution, and let me show you. I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set u is equal to tangent x, so that we get du is equal to secant square x dx. 
and then I would like to isolate the dx for you guys. So dx is equal to du over secant square x. Okay, so the usual way to do the integrals. So let's take this integral into u world. We get this. On the top, we have the secant square x over, this is also secant square x plus, this part is what? Tangent x is u, tangent square will be u square. So we will have u square, and then dx is that. So let me put down du over secant square x. And what happens? Well, we see that secant square x here cancels out with that secant square x. So that's pretty good. We are making some progress, isn't it? However, here's the trouble. Because we still have this secant square x. So what can we do? And now, this is the time that we are going to borrow an identity <laughs> again. This right here, okay, this is the same as what? Can we write it in terms of tangent? Yes, this is the same as um, tangent square x plus 1. And then for tangent is what? We know tangent is the u, right? So this is the same as u squared plus 1, right? So this is the same as integrating. On the top, we just have a 1 now over, this is u squared, but then we have another u squared, right? So altogether is what? 2u squared, and then plus 1, du. You see, after we divide everything by cosine squared x, we can take this integral into the u world nicely, and can we integrate this? The answer to that is yes. To do that, we can just uh, look at this carefully. This is the integral on the top, we still have 1. And let me put a 1 first, if you don't mind. Plus, I will have to look at this number as parentheses. I have to put a 2 inside of the parentheses, and then that will be square root of 2. And then this u also inside of parentheses, and then to the second power, the u. Okay, because this way it will give me inverse tangent of the input. All right, so now I'm going to sh show you guys the u substitution, another u substitution in our head. The derivative of square root of 2 times u is square root of 2. We know 1 over 1 plus something square. The integral of that is inverse tangent of the input, right? So let me put that down. We will have the inverse tangent of the input, which is the square root of 2 times u, like this. However, because we mentioned that the derivative of square root of 2 times u is square root of 2, when we do um, the u substitution backwards like this, we have to divide it by the derivative, is the chain rule backwards. So we have to multiply by 1 over square root of 2. And we are not done yet and I don't have enough space, I will write it down here. This is 1 over square root of 2, and then we have the inverse tangent. Square root of 2 stays the same, but then for the u, is tangent x. So I have to put this down. Tangent x, and then we are done. So we can put a plus c, and this is the answer. That's it.